all teachers students and other participants i dr dhanse dawangan welcome you all in fifth day of one week national e workshop jointly organized by department of chemistry geology and botany government lahari pg college chirmiri korea chatisgarh it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our today's dynamic speaker dr satish k verma sir who is going to deliver a talk about methodologies to study seed endophytic bacteria and their role in plant development i really thank to sir for giving his valuable time and being here with us in our busy schedule before inviting to sir for his lecture i would like to give a brief introduction about him please allow me sir dr satish k verma is an assistant professor in the department of botany banaras hindu university varanasi india he received his phd in botany plant microbes from banaras hindu university varanasi dr verma also serve as assistant professor in the de department of botany vishva bharti shanti niketan india for about 3 years sir has awarded raman post doctoral fellowship from usa sir has visited and worked in the department of plant biology rutgers university new jersey usa for a year sir has published more than 32 papers in scientific reported journals including microbial ecology symbiosis annals of microbiology applied microbiology scientific reports frontiers in microbiology plant and soil current science etc he has also published 10 books chapter and edited a books on seed endophytics his area of research interest include function of plant micro diversity and ecology and elucidating the roles of microbes in modulation of plant development and production of host from biotic and abiotic stresses so with this word i again inviting to sir for his lecture welcome sir uh, thank you dr kind words uh, so uh, i will have to share this slide so let me Is that uh, slide is visible? Yes, sir, visible. Okay, it is in full screen now. Yes, sir, now is in full screen. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, greetings to all of you. Uh, uh, the principal of the college, Dr. R. P. Tiwari, uh, convener of this uh, program, Dr. Kartika Kishmuthu, co-convener, Dr. Dhansa Devangan. Secretary of this uh, webinar, Mr. Viren Kumar, and they are all participants. So, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizer for giving me this uh, platform to discuss some of my works uh, related with the uh, related with the my research work. So, in this online webinar on research methodology and uh, scientific study. i would like to uh, discuss about the methodology which i am using in my work uh, <clears throat> for uh, seed endophytic bacteria how the seed endophytic bacteria is influencing the plant growth and development so what about the methodology i have used recently some of that work i would like to discuss along with the uh, result of my work also so uh, uh, i am audible also sir any yes sir Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Okay. So, as we all know that the plants uh, uh, have been involved with the continuous interactions with the microbes, uh, plethora of the microbes, uh, 
and in that process plant recruit these uh, microbes into the different uh, parts of their uh, uh, different parts of their plant and even their uh, their surroundings so and these microbes uh, actually play a very important role in growth and the development of the, uh, the plant. It is like uh, that uh, the, uh, the human, if you compare with the human gut microbiota, uh, might be the, many students have uh, 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 knowing that uh, the importance of the gut microbiota in the whole body. So according to the new uh, the concept of microbiota, microbiome, uh, now we are not a single, uh, we cannot consider as an individual species. What were our performance, what were our metabolism, these all are not only decided by the genome of the individual species, but it is a, overall, the, uh, overall the expressions of the, all the microbes which are associated with our gut microbes. So you can imagine that the role of these microbes can play uh, with the plant, their expressions, their outcome, their growth, development, everything. So it is like a human gut microbiota. So plant also recruit these microbes. So, and during, uh, 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 in other words, you can say that the, when the plant is started uh, evolving, the terrestrial plants, uh, these microbes play great role in that terrestrialization of the plant uh, into the lands. So, and these microbes fall into the two important categories. The, uh, the one is, one become a parasite, they, they cause disease or they, uh, they, they, uh, they have a negative influence on the plant. Another group, they are new to this. They help plant in their growth and development in various, uh, various ways. So, and this, the whole microbes which are associated with the plant, these are uh, Consider as a plant microbiota, and this plant microbiota, the compositions of these mucilage, which are beneficial, which are helping plant in getting its full expressions, uh, and the parasites. These two compositions it depends upon the environment also. So environment and the soils, uh, they decides uh, uh, the what kind of the compositions the plant uh, may recruit in their inside or their outside the body. So it's like our gut microbiota. So if we have a healthy, if we eat healthy foods, if we our life is healthy, uh, means uh, daily uh, daily routine is healthy. We are doing exercise. We are eating good food. So we will develop a good microbiota, gut microbiota. And in turn, this good gut microbiota give, uh, gives you a lot of uh, uh, good things to your body. So it will help you. Uh, and make you disease free. But if you not eat good uh, foods, your lifestyle is not good, definitely it will change the gut microbiota. So, and uh, their, uh, their influence will be negative to your body. So it is like that. So plant microbiota is also uh, supports the plant growth and development. Uh, and this plant microbiota uh, can be broadly uh, grouped into the three important categories. Uh, the rhizospheric microbiota, the, uh, uh, the, the region around the roots are called as rhizospheres. So, few millimeters regions around the roots is a rhizosphere. And this rhizosphere uh, consists of a uh, lot of microbes. Are, uh, you can say that these plants recruit a lot of microbes around their roots. And in terms of these microbes, uh, Influence. They provide. They help in nutrient mobilization. They help in disease protections. They help in abiotic stress tolerance. So these rhizospheric microbes, uh, they play a great role. So this is one group. Another group is a phyllospheric microbiota, which uh, the all their food systems, the plant, they consist the microbes which are called as phyllospheric microbiota. And the another group. Uh, inside the inside the plant body, the plant uh, they also uh, during that interactions they allow certain kind of microbes to internalize into uh, their body. So these microbes are endophytic microbes. They are endophytic microbiota inside. They may present in they, they they have been reported from the every parts of the plant and every plants also. So uh, these microbes, uh, the endophytes, huh? so my talk would be more focused on the endophytic microbes. 
So these endo uh, microbes uh, are those microbes. Uh, if you say the simple, uh, endo means the inside, pipe means the plant. So all those microbes which are inside the plant uh, consider as the endo pipe. So this term was uh, long back was introduced by the uh, D. Bell. But uh, at that time, he did not mention the nature of the microbes. So the microbes which are growing inside, living inside. So what is the nature? They may be parasite also. But he did not mention the nature of the microbes. But the present, uh, the present uh, conclusion is that the microbes which are growing inside, without causing any impact to the plant, are uh, are the endophytes. So all the microbes which live inside the plant. Healthy plant and without uh, showing any negative symptoms of disease are endophytes. So th these endophytes may be bacteria, fungi, echinobacteria, uh, and they are present in the all plants. All the plants till date, uh, which uh, uh, we have looked for the endophytes, they consist endophytes, and they are present in every very every parts of the plant. So uh, every parts. Uh, uh, you can say even the seed, flower, leaf, fruit, the slippery parts of the plant, they have microbes. And these microbes which are inside, they, they, they have, uh, they repose, their role has been reported uh, for growth and development of the plant. Uh, so, a major focus area uh, of this endophyte research that includes the one is diversity, means uh, uh, the if you see that the uh, estimated diversity, estimated diversity and the actual diversity, there's a lot of difference in that. So where the question is the where are the missing microbes? So maybe because that all plants consist of this kind of microbes, and but we are uh, we are able to know only little of that plants. Only 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 few plants we have explored for their. Uh, uh, their endophytic diversity. So the one group, the one area of this endophyte research is to look at the diversity, the what, how, how many types and how many numbers of these microbes are there inside the plant. So this is the one. Another area, an important area, their biotechnological applications. So this biotechnological application means that because you know that all that uh, more than fifty percent of the medicines uh, what we have are what we. They are discovering is coming from the microbial world. So, uh, any any problem? Is that okay? So uh, yes. Okay. So uh, the other yes. yeah, biotechnological applications. So, Mr. Uh, we all know that the more than fifty percent of the medicines, that information about the medicines is coming from the microbes. So. Uh, this uh, uh, this would be the uh, new alternative way to search for the new uh, metabolites also because we are facing uh, day by day the new drug resistance microbes, new emerging diseases. So we need an alternative method. So this group of microbes may give uh, us a new alternative source. We can say where we can look about the uh, discovery of the new. Uh, metabolites, new uh, new medicines, new drug, and uh, the third is a plant microbe interactions. The mechanism how that the microbes associate with the plant and how they influence the growth and development of the plant. So this uh, the third area I would like to uh, cover today. Uh, so the question is that uh, as I mentioned earlier that the all parts of the plant they consist uh, yeah, they contain the microbes they contain the endophytic microbe. So question is that is that uh, seeds of the plant also uh, have microbes endophytic microbes? The answer is yes. So all seeds which are investigated till they they show the presence of endophytic microbes, they may be fungi, they may be bacteria also. So uh, even we uh, we have worked on the several seeds, several crop seeds including rice, millets, pearl millets, brown millets, uh, brown top millets, uh, maize, and we found that uh, the seeds, uh, they contain bacteria, the endophytic bacteria. 
and these bacteria are important. So the next question is, is that C, because you know that seeds are the miniature of the plant. Seeds has to carry the information to the next generation, from the previous generation to the next generation. So presence of this kind of microbes into the seeds, uh, it, it, it shows some importance because they carry that microbes also to the next generation. So presence of microbes into the seeds, so they have a more uh, functional role, they can play better uh, role than the other microbes which are present in the rhizosphere. So uh, the two important points, one is the vertical transmission from the previous generation to the next generation and the next one because they are better positions, uh, you all know that the seed has to germinate into the soil with a lot of pressures of the pathogenic microbes and the abiotic stress, a lot of things are there. So the microbes which are reside into the seeds, they have a better place to, uh, to play important role to induce more uh, benefit to the developing seeds because the seed, germinating seeds are more prone to be infected by the disease. So if there are some beneficial microbes into the seeds, they, they can play a great role in defending the seedling formation, seedling establishment against the pathogens as well as the biotic stress. So in this direction, uh, uh, the, uh, the further I will uh, discuss. Uh, some of my works and the methodology uh, with that question, so how that uh, uh, the seed endophytes, the seed endophytes bacteria influence the growth and development of plants. So how to explore this thing? So I would, uh, I would like to uh, take one case study in the uh, brown top millet seeds and with the hypothesis that uh, uh, because that brown top millets has not been intensively selected, we hypothesize that seeds of brown top millets uh, may still inhabit indigenous endophytic bacteria that influence cell uh, growth and development and reduces the disease susceptibility against the uh, various soil pathogens. So, hypothesis is that the seed carrying bacteria. It, it may influence growth and development and it may depend seedling development from the soil pathogens where the seeds are growing as a seedlings. So the first and the most important uh, steps to study the uh, endophytic microbes, seed endophytic microbes is to isolate that microbes uh, from inside. The first step is isolation. So, uh, in that isolation of that seed endophytic bacteria, we have to ensure that we will have to ensure that the seed, the microbes which are coming out from the seeds, it is not from the surface. So we have to first show that the seeds or the tissue from where we are isolating that microbes is fully surface stabilized. The first step in isolation of that microbe is surface stabilized. So surface splicing, there are various methods, uh, various uh, uh, steps have been uh, recognized and described for the various kind of tissue. What we have adopted in this seed, the brown top millet seeds, we have used uh, sodium hypochlorite, 4%. I have written here 1 to 4%. So uh, it is 4% we have used. So in various methods, you will see that uh, because these steps, the surface splicing steps, uh, we, uh, you have to optimize uh, and it depends purely upon the kind of tissue you are using for the isolation of the endocrine micro. So uh, that's why I have written 1 to 4 percent to uh, 4 percent. In some methods, uh, in some, for some tissue like soft tissue, uh, uh, you will have to reduce the concentration and the time also. So we have used 4 percent sodium hypochlorite. Uh, for 10 uh, different time intervals because we have to first optimize that the which um, uh, how much time and how much concentration of sodium hypochlorite is enough to remove the surface microbes so that we can avoid the any contamination from the surface microbes and then followed by the alcohol uh, treatment the 70 percent alcohol alcohol uh, uh, one to three minutes and then the rinsing. This step is very important. You have to rinse it several times so that uh, 
the smell and the this uh, uh, nascent chloride uh, uh, it it will completely washed out. Otherwise, it will hinders the uh, emerging microbes from the uh, seeds. So after that surface crystallization and the rinsing in sterile water, uh, we have plated this. Uh, seeds on the nutrient agar plate and incubated uh, in the OD incubator at 27 degrees Celsius plus minus degrees Celsius and after 48 uh, 72 hours uh, you can see that the seeds are uh, see the bacteria are coming out from the seeds and coming out from the seeds so this coming out uh, bacteria are actually the endothelic bacteria so next step is how to purify them because you don't know the how many bacteria and uh, how many species of bacteria is coming out from the seed. So the next step is purification. So in that purification, the most basic steps we all know, we, we study into the uh, college. So that is strict plate method. So uh, from that plate, from this plate, the bacteria which are emerging from the seed just with the help of loop. You have to take the <coughs> bacteria on loop, inoculation loop, and it's streak. And it's streaking in a strict plate method. Uh, it is always mentioned that it's streaking with a four, uh, two to three, a uh, three to four level of streaking. So first, uh, touching the bacteria uh, from the original plate, you have to streak, and then uh, make sure that they your uh, then you claim the loop. Uh, till it become red hot and again you will street starting from the previous streaking uh, and the same thing you have to repeat again and again so in four steps you will see you will be able to see the individual colony because the concurrent growth of bacteria heavy growth of bacteria on plate you cannot say they are one bacteria they are single colony they are originated from means the single species of that colony so to ensure that you have to get the individual colony. So for that individual colony, you have to you will have to streak it uh, four steps, three step <coughs> level. So this is the way you can do. So in the first step, you will see that colony is heavy, concurrent growth. Second step, there will be some dilutions. There will be again, you will not be able to see the individual colony. The third step, uh, you will see the heavy growth, light, uh, light growth. Uh, but again, it is difficult to get the individual individual colony. So at the four steps, you can see that there are individual colony. And these individual colony, discrete colony, actually the colony which are immersed, which are growing from the single bacteria. So these colony, these individual colony, you can say these colony are the pure colony. So now the next step is to uh, take this colony and uh, transfer to the uh, another plate. So you can get the pure, uh, pure bacterial colony, pure bacterial uh, bacteria on each plate. So in this C, the brown top millet seeds, we have isolated four. <coughs> different bacteria, four different marcotypes and when we identified them, so for identifications uh, there are different methods, morphological methods, biochemical methods, but the most uh, in morphological method and biochemical method you cannot say that bacteria is, uh, means the identification of that bacteria at the species level is very difficult based on the morphology and the biochemical method. So the most uh, simplest way to isolate the genomic DNA and do a 16 years R DNA sequencing. 16 years R DNA sequencing because that 16 years R DNA are the conjured region of that bacteria, the signature of that bacteria. Uh, it will help in discrimination of the uh, yeah, differentiation of these uh, different group of bacteria. So with the help of this 16 years R DNA sequencing. So after genomic DNA structures, you have to do PCR using 16 years RDNA primer, uh, 16 years forward and reverse primer. And then after sequencing, you will, uh, we, 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 uh, we were able to identify these four bacteria, these four macrotypes, I will protobacterium, mycobacterium, methylobacterium, bacillus amylobacterium. So these four bacteria we have isolated from the seeds. 
So this is a core type of battery. I am not telling about the uh, abundance of this bacteria into the seeds because our main purpose was to see how many types of bacteria were present in the seeds. And uh, our concept was that these bacteria were playing an important role in their seeds and seedling development. So the next step is to screen their activity so that we could know the uh, what kind of uh, what kind of health benefit they can provide to the uh, developing seed, uh, uh, developing germinating seed and seedlings uh, formation. So the first is phosphate solubilization, potassium solubilization, oxygen production, antagonism uh, <clears throat> against the various pathogens. So these are the basic uh, steps we have used to. Uh, there are others also. You can test nitrogen fixation activity. You can test uh, uh, cyclopore activity. You can test uh, uh, other other plant growth promoting activity or uh, biocontrol activity. So these four activities we had used. Uh, generally, we use to screen that bacteria means the ability of that bacteria they can play. So we have uh, done the phosphate solubilization, oxygen production test, and the antibiotic. So in that, I would like to discuss uh, the uh, method which is used for the oxygen test. So you can test oxygen in two ways, the qualitative way as well as the quantitative way. So uh, we have quantified the oxygen production uh, by the microbes. Oxygen uh, is a growth hormone, it is a root inducing, root growth promoting hormones and it is produced by the plant and the several bacteria it has been reported. Their pathways are present in the bacteria and the plants also. So we have grown these bacteria into the liquid cultures <coughs> uh, for two to, uh, three to four days uh, and uh, and then we have sent a used heat and uh, with the help of one Salpaski resin uh, we have uh, we have tested the qualitative as well as we have quantified the uh, the presence of this oxygen into the solution. So, uh, and that tells about that bacteria can produce oxygen. And oxygen is an important hormone for plant and growth development. So, so <clears throat> uh, in that method, uh, what do you have to do? That uh, you get the pure colony of the bacteria and grow into the broad cultures. Broad cultures for three to four days uh, that I have mentioned earlier, <clears throat> and then centrifuge it, take out the supermetent, supermetent of that uh, the cultures, and mix with the two ml of one ml of supermetent and two ml of Salkowski resin. I would mention later the for the Salkowski resin. So in that Salkowski resin, can incubate for it uh, for three to four, thirty to fourteen minutes. Thirty minutes is enough, and if that bacteria is producing oxygen. Uh, it definitely gives the change in the color. So if the color is uh, uh, like pink and red colors comes out from the mixture, so you can see that bacteria is producing. That is a qualitative say. The presence of color or pink to red, it says the, uh, the bacteria the bacteria produce oxygen. Uh, and uh, for quantification, what you have to do is just take a OD at 530 nanometers. And based on that absorbance, uh, absorbance, absorbance, making a standard term, you can measure, you can quantify the level of uh, the oxygen produced by the bacteria. So for that quantification, so this is the uh, uh, composition of the Salkowski resin. It's very simple. Uh, only things uh, you have to do that um, every time you have to prepare the press, uh, the Salkowski resin. It is a mixture of uh, ferric chloride. Uh, 0.5 molar ferric uh, chloride with 50 ml water and then mixed with the corn sulfuric acid. So that uh, that reagent is called uh, Salkowski reagent. So you can use it, uh, if you want to use, you use it in place conditions and right? don't use the, the old reagent otherwise it will give, uh, uh, it will give results but not, uh, uh, not good results. So that quantification would be the wrong quantification to use the old reagent. So the principle behind that uh, this calorimetric is assessment of oxygen is that uh, there are uh, different alternative pathways. So tryptophan is uh, actually the precursor for the synthesis of this endolastic acid. So there is an intermediate in that 
the indoor bioeducacy as well as the indoor uh, islamite so that actually bind with this uh, this uh, uh, read with this uh, Salkovsky region and gives a pink color, pinkish color, and that pinkish color can be observed uh, absorbed 513 nanometer with nitrogen. So, by measuring that, so our quantification, what you have to do, you have to prepare a standard curve. Huh? So, a standard curve, so uh, uh, just I will skip this. So, what you have to uh, for quantification, you have to prepare a standard curve. So, for a standard curve, you will have to prepare the known concentration of oxygen with different concentrations. Say, for example, you can uh, prepare the concentration of oxygen, uh, uh, I mean, pure oxygen with 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 uh, microgram per ml, or you can use 1, 2, 10, depending upon. Uh, uh, because we have checked first the 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and we, uh, we, are, we, we found that the, uh, this, uh, the, this standard curves uh, did not give the better uh, straight line curve. So we had uh, later we used the 1 to 10 concentration. So in that, uh, in 1 to 10 concentration, 1 to 10 microgram per ml. And we mixed uh, with the Salkowski region in that proportion 1 ml of the solution and 2 ml of the Salkowski region. And then we took the absorbance at 530 nanometers. So, so you can see the gradient uh, in the color development. So starting from 0 to 10 microgram per ml. So by taking this OD versus the concentration of the oxygen, you can draw the, the standard curve. The standard curve. So, uh, simple uh, using Excel, you can draw the standard curves, and uh, with this relationship, now you have a scale. And this is a kind of a scale. By using this scale, you can measure the unknown concentration. Unknown. Suppose you have thrown the bacteria into the medium, and uh, after four days, you took out the uh, super negative mixed with the salt positive agent, and you have observed certain OD. Suppose you have observed the OD uh, around 4 at 539. So if you uh, if you plot that uh, if, if you uh, if you compare this 4.4 OD with this standard curve, you will get certain amount around 9 to uh, around 9 to 10 microgram per ml of that uh, this bacterium is producing oxygen. So this standard curve will help you in that. Quantification also. So, if you want to quantify that oxygen, so you can use this standard term. If you only want to say that bacteria is producing oxygen, yes or no, qualification, you did not to prepare this standard term. So, this is the way you can test the oxygen, you can quantify the oxygen because the oxygen is important. So, what we have observed with these four bacteria, so, and this four bacteria were. Uh, it's named as a M1, M2, M4, M3, M4. So what we observe in the oxygen production without tryptophan and with tryptophan. So these two bacteria, the M2 and the M4, it uh, gives a positive taste for oxygen production, but the M1 and M2 did not give the result. So these two bacteria uh, is producing oxygen. And then we have tested the phosphate uh, solubilization activity for all these four bacteria. So out of that, four to three gets the phosphate test for phosphate solubilization. And we have also tested the uh, antifungal activity by simple method that is antagonism against the soil pathogens like Fusarium, Marginaria, and Tabularia. Uh, actually, we have used four pathogens, so sclerosina. So uh, and we found that this four, young four, the last one you can see, uh, this last one, uh, it gives a uh, much better result. It was able to inhibit the growth up to all four tested uh, uh, uh respectively. You can say against the fusarium, it is a 48%. It inhibited the 48% of the growth. Uh, 60% and the Arginaria 60% and the Sclerotinia 
of the two percent. So with this with this result, we can say that this young food is a good biocontrol agent. So might be this bacteria is playing important role during cyclic formation uh, in inhibiting the various pathogens which are present in this soil. So uh, so next step was that how will we improve uh, our concept? Uh, that the seed inhibiting by inhibiting bacteria, the seed uh, vector bacteria, they they are important in growth and development. So uh, uh, for that we uh, we did a re-inoculation experiment. We tried to re-inoculate the same bacteria into the seed and see the effect. So for that re-inoculation experiment, uh, again there is a problem that how. What kind of medium? What kind of substrate we will use uh, uh, to use to prove that concept? So, initially in that we had used the agarose on the plate, uh, simple plate, and MS agarose, the MS medium, consists of all kind of nutrients. Agarose is no nutrients, uh, agarose really, and the potting mix consisting of perlite, soil, uh, and the sand. So out of that, we found that the, the uh, in the MS agarose there was no effect, and we cannot say that the bacteria is doing anything or not because the MS agarose is consists of all kind of nutrients. So uh, it, is, uh, it is difficult to say that how the microbes will work in that situation. So MS agarose did not uh, we we were not able to say anything, but in the potting mix, which is very close to the our soil. Uh, we were able to see the effect of the re-inoculation and the disinfections, the removing of the bacteria from the seed and the re-inoculation further. We could able to see the uh, significance effect on the seedling development. So we use this uh, potting mix. So these are the magenta boxes, magenta boxes, the plastic boxes. Uh, we have used this trial soil. So in this first one, the positive control, we just use the surface stylized Means that positive control consists of all kind of microbes, their own microbes. But in this uh, control, I can say the negative control. In this one, we use the antibiotic. So we use the antibiotic to the seed so that it could remove the <clears throat> all their endocrine uh, bacteria. So and then this same seed. This same seed, which we have treated with the antibiotics, we, uh, we re inoculated with all that isolate, individually M1, M2, M3, and M4. So you can see that the uh, this M3 and the M4, uh, you can see the effect, this M3 and the M4. Uh, it is actually the uh, application of this microbes so recovered the growth and it is close or better even. Uh, the positive control. So these two bacteria are playing very important role growth and development. So the same thing when we uh, take out the put out the roots and they measure the soot and the <coughs> soot and the root length, and uh, we observe that the root were much better uh, in the M3 and the M4. And uh, when we re isolated the bacteria, so we we proved that. This positive control, uh, this control, the negative control, where we have used the antibiotic, we did not isolate any bacteria into the soil. So it's so that with this this group of uh, this set of uh, treatment was free from any uh, is free from the any kind of microbe. The positive control consists of all kind of microbes, and where we have re-inoculated, we observe the same microbes which were uh, which we uh, re -inoculate. So this re experiment is so that the uh, this bacteria uh, are crucial for their seedling growth and development. And uh, these two M3 and M4 play great. So we have been and we did this experiment twice in the two trials, the first trial and the second trial. And both the trials and in the both the trials we observe more or less. Uh, uh, the similar, uh, similar result, more or less similar result, and we uh, we found that this M3, the Methylobacterium, and the M4, Bacillus uh, amylolytics, these two bacteria significantly improved the root as well as the soot length of the uh, plant, press weight, uh, root length, soot length of the press weight of the plant. So 
uh, seedlings. So we have uh, used this uh, eight-day-old seedling, and the purpose uh, uh, is because that the, the box which we have used uh, in the eighth day uh, it touches the top of the seedlings. We are able to grow at the top of it, so so that we have we have taken out that all the seedlings after the eight days, uh, eight days of the growth. So these are of the eight days old uh, data. So it was very uh, very uh, exciting result to, to see this re-inoculation experiment. So and again we have measured the chlorophyll content because the chlorophyll content is one of the uh, good parameter to say the health of the plant. So we found the more or less similar kind of result what we have observed in the root <coughs> lens, root lens and the test rate. So we found that uh, this uh, the treatments, the treatments of that bacteria uh, improved the pigment contained the chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, uh, and the measurement of this chlorophyll A, B is very simple. Uh, you can use the method, very old method, using 80 percent uh, acetone. Uh, you, you you have to crush the around 100 uh, milligram of the fresh leaf into the un, uh, 100 ml of the 15 ml of the 80 percent acetone and uh, centrifuge it and take the only like three different nanometers 663 400 and 645 so and there is a formula uh, based on that formula you can calculate the amount of flow in present in the uh, growing leaf so and the same for the carotenoid so renoplation renoplation actually improved the uh, this chlorophyll content into the seedling. So uh, this proved that the, uh, they, this bacteria uh, uh, playing important role, playing important role in growth and development of seedling. So these two, the M3 and the M4, this M3, even uh, if you, uh, in earlier slides, I mentioned that this M M3 even did not show any phosphate salvation activity and arching coercion. Even though this bacteria is stimulating the growth, uh, significantly is stimulating the growth of this uh, uh, ground drop middle seedling. So maybe uh, this bacteria is playing other role. They may be influencing, uh, inducing the, the host gene expression so that the growing seedling can expect greater nutrients from the soil. So, and uh, this bacillus amyloleptic patient, so equally both are very important. But uh, this methylobacterium did not show any antifungal activity. But this bacillus uh, SPC did show very good antifungal activity against this wild bacteria. So uh, next was that uh, how to see how to see these microbes colonizing into the root. So these are the pictures of the root surface and the root hair. So the first picture is a control root. So we have used two methods. One is DAB staining method, another simple microscope, the light microscope with DAB staining. Another method is a fluorescence staining. So in that the DAB staining, DAB is a stain, stain dienobenzene. It actually stains the hydrogen peroxide. So there is a hypothesis that this bacteria when colonized on the root surface, they secrete, yeah, they induce to host to secrete a lot of hydrogen peroxide. So DAB staining along with that uh, uh, enzyme blue stain, it, uh, uh, it gives better pictures to uh, see the colonization of bacteria on the root surface. So A, this A in the control, we can see that uh, there is no bacteria, it's a clean. But B is colonized by M3, uh, methylobacterium, and uh, M3 also in the C. And these are the root hairs. And the root hairs, you can see that the root hairs uh, uh, in generally is colonized by the bacteria. So, because the internal colonization of the microbes is very difficult to observe. So, uh, these are uh, some of the good pictures which we were able to see the, uh, this bacteria inside the root hairs and the root bearing kind of. And you can see the root hairs <coughs> are colonized by the M4. Uh, Bacillus species and some of that in generalized into the uh, root hairs. These are the, these two are the root hairs, and this picture here uh, is a root parenchyma. So you can see that how bacteria are present on the surface of the root parenchyma, and into the intercellular space of the root parenchyma also. You can say uh, these bacteria are present uh, 
proved by kind of this one. Another method we have used the fluorescence staining using the fluorescence stain <coughs> cyto uh, RT. So actually this stain actually only stained to the nucleic acid, so we were able to see that uh, the bacteria colonizing uh, the root parenchyma, root hairs uh, of the treated cricket uh, roots. So uh, this is a good way to see the fluorescence uh, microscopy is a good way to see the formation of bacteria on the root surface. So uh, uh, another method uh, can be used. We are working on that to transform that bacteria. Uh, with the GFP, uh, GFP tagging and then we can visualize that bacteria, we can actually track that bacteria, where that bacteria is growing, growing to the root or growing to the soil. So, uh, for tracking that uh, one method, the GFP, uh, GFP tagging and, uh, can be done, uh, can be done with the possible and several uh, uh, in few study, not several, but few study, we have seen that the uh, the scientists have used the GFP uh, GFP uh, tagged endophilic bacteria. So these pictures, the A, B, C, D, E, F, these pictures uh, I have taken from the some other study, uh, some other uh, publications. So this is these pictures are the actually the confocal pictures. So where you can see that G, uh, GFP tagged bacterium inside the root tissue. Root hairs, root parenchyma, uh, surface of the root tissue, and uh, this picture, uh, the right side top, uh, is a tomato, a tomato root. Uh, you can see that uh, there are some fluorescent green fluorescent. So actually, these are the E. coli. So in that experiment, we were uh, only uh, use this. GFP tag E. coli, we wanted to see that E. coli can enter some of the plant or not, and we were able to see in the fluorescent microscopy. So, this E. coli, uh, the green process were observed in the root, uh, vascular tissue. So, that might be way that bacteria move into the sewage system. So, these are the, some of the good pictures uh, using fluorescence as well as the computer microscopy. So, these are the method to can be used to visualize the colonization of bacteria, colonization of the endocrine microbes inside the root, inside the soil, inside the several uh, part of the plant. So in the earlier, uh, uh, we, I had mentioned that the, uh, the one bacteria, the bacillus amylolipidations, this species was able to inhibit the all pathogen tested significantly more than 50% the growth of this pathogen. So uh, we, uh, and then we look out this literature and we observe that this bacillus species, some of the bacillus species, they produce antifungal lipopeptides, antifungal lipopeptides. So then in that direction, we try to extract this lipopeptide from the bacteria. And uh, our purpose was to prove why, why this uh, bacteria is inhibiting the growth of this pathogen. So to prove that concept, uh, we have extracted the lipopeptide. So in uh, some of the slides I would like to discuss about discuss about the antifungal effect. Uh, how that this seed endophilic bacteria uh, protecting the developing seedling from the pathogen. So uh, extractions of lipopeptide. Uh, uh, many bacillus species are recruited to produce several kind of lipopeptides. So what you have to do. Uh, uh, just grow the bacteria, uh, the bacteria which are showing antifungal activity. We have grown that bacteria, the bacillus amylolipidase, into the broth, mutual broth, and uh, uh, for four to uh, five days. And then we have centrifuged it to remove the debris, the cell debris, and we have collected the supernatant and acidified it with the uh, SCL up to the three pH, and then we leave it for overnight into the refrigerator uh, 4 degrees Celsius. Again, we centrifuge it uh, and we uh, collected the precipitate and dissolve it into the methanol and since we, uh, if we collected the precipitate and dissolve it, there will be some debris of the cells also and the cells, there will be chances. So, you have to 
again after dissolving to the methanol that creates, we have to filter. Filters will be micron filters. So 0.45 micron filters is enough to filter out the all that uh, the unwanted content from that, and then dry it and again dissolve in the methanol. So this uh, this is the way you can isolate lipopeptides. This is the standardized protocols uh, we have used and we uh, we have extracted this lipopeptide from that bacteria, particular bacteria. And then we have used that lipopeptide because we have tested the antifungal activity against the uh, 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 against the various pathogens to intermediate. So now our aim was to test that lipopeptide actually that is showing antifungal activity or not. So uh, that dissolved uh, that, that uh, the dissolved in methanol that lipopeptides. Uh, we have tested this diffusion assay. Before that, we have also one can identified. We are uh, identified that lipopeptide which kind of structure is there. So for that, the best method is a multi-graph matrix assisted in laser resolution and analysis. Time up. So there is an advanced version of you can say the LCMS. So where you can easily uh, just you have to use the pure pure respected lipopeptides and uh, with more uh, this multi-graph. So this facility we do not have here, but we uh, we have sent our samples to. Various uh, 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 this uh, uh, once we have uh, sent the, uh, this samples to the NIPG and once for this some service support service system, so they have identified that little tries for us. So we found that this uh, bacteria were uh, producing important known uh, little tries, and those little tries are known antifungal, known antifungal. So. Uh, so when we tested that lipopeptide using this diffusion assay, so uh, uh, you might have heard that this diffusion assay. So in this diffusion assay, what you have to do just load the your content, your metabolite on the disk, and challenge that disk against the uh, the organism, the organism which you wanted to test. So we have tested the four different pathogens using this diffusion assay by loading. 100 microgram and 200 microgram. So, and the right side is the back, I know, back from pictures from the back side of the plate. So, you can see that the inhibition is even much stronger uh, than the uh, the antagonism assay. So, this this is showing that this bacteria actually inhibiting the fungal pathogen because of the lipopeptide. And when we uh, Tested in the magenta boxes, we were also observed that the seed, uh, the seeds which were treated with this bacteria, uh, were able to sustain the growth in the pathogen presence. But uh, the seeds which were not treated with that bacteria were completely collapsed and colonized and degraded by the uh, this fusarium bacteria. So it is showing, it is proving our concept that. It is because of the bacterial labor peptides, uh, the silics were uh, silics were protected against this wild bacteria. So, <clears throat> and the further to prove that labor peptides. So, since the labor peptide is in surface ten teenager, so we did a drop collapse assay. So, just we have extracted the drop and mixed with the mixed with the drop of water, the equal proportion of water, and we have. Uh, we put the drop, the 30 to 50 microliter of the drop on the paraffin, paraffin layer. So the the bacteria which were producing the M4, the lipopeptides, you can see the drops were completely collapsed. Uh, in five minutes, in 30 minutes, it is completely collapsed. But the drops which were not containing the bacterial extract or lipopeptides were still. Uh, it is not collapsed like that. Yeah. So it is again showing that the uh, this uh, lipopeptides it confirms the presence of the lipopeptides in the broth, uh, broth of the this bacteria. And we have screened that uh, several using the timers of the several known uh, gene for the lipopeptides like tangicin, surfactin, uh, bacillomycin, surfactin C, and isoin B. 
and we observed that the, this bacteria contain the genes of this uh, surfactants, uh, surfactant C and the I3. So uh, it, uh, it now proved that the bacteria since contain the genes, since uh, we have isolated the liquid also, so because of that, uh, it is showing the antifungal and it, is, uh, it, it may help during the cellular development uh, and uh, means protections against this wild pathogen. So, uh, and this is study we uh, were able to publish. This is the one part of that my work. So, uh, where we proved that the seed containing microbes uh, are important, they modulate the cellular growth and development. They provide nutrients to the seedlings and they reduce the pathogen damage, damage uh, uh, during the seedling formation. Because uh, in experiments, we observed that when we remove this bacteria using antibiotics from the seed, the seeds were more susceptible to the uh, disease in the in, in, in susceptible condition, in the pathogen precious condition. So, uh, finally, we proved uh, with this study. So these are the some of the steps I have mentioned, which can be used to study the seed endophytic bacteria. So whatever I have uh, discussed, it was for culturable microbes. So because I I should mention that a uh, lot of microbes which are not culturable. So the main microbes we, we don't know they are there and they are playing an important role, but. They will not, uh, you will not be able to culture them on the plate. So for those microbes, we cannot say that uh, how uh, how those microbes are interacting with the host plant. So for that, uh, there is a metagenomic study uh, by using whole, uh, whole DNA study where you can say that this group of microbes are there. And the fun functional metagenomics uh, will be able to test that these microbes may play uh, this, this kind of thing. Oh, so whatever I have discussed, it is only for the cultural microbes. So in that line, we worked on the permillus also, we worked on the male also, and we, we found that uh, uh, the bacteria which are present in the sea, uh, they are important, they are important. So, and uh, one thing also I would like to mention, so, so the seeds, uh, so it, this uh, study, it, it gives important message to how to we store the seeds. So, because in the market, if you see the growing seeds, uh, they use a lot of uh, pesticides, a lot of chemicals to coat them, they mix them. So, this kind of uh, practice, uh, uh, the industry they are using to protect from the pathogens, but uh, side by side, this practice using pesticides and the chemicals to treat the seeds, uh, it is actually reducing it is actually negatively impacting its own microbiota so so uh, this study uh, suggests that the while you are using the chemical to treat the seeds uh, please consider that the seeds also contain a lot of important microbes so uh, if you use these chemicals definitely it will uh, it will reduce its own microbiota which are very crucial these are very crucial so this is uh, all from my side to it. So I would like to thank so where I have gone. Uh, these are my teachers uh, in the department, Professor Aspatla, Professor Anke Dudu, and these are some of my colleagues who are my students. Uh, 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 students like uh, Anand, Deepak, Pooja, they are working uh, in different aspects. Uh, and I would like to thank also Jim Swipes where I worked uh, as a postdoc during my PhD. This is all about from my side. So if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them in the Thank you, sir. Uh, it was a really a nice presentation. Uh, actually, sir, I have a one question, if you allow me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, how endophytes regulate uh, gro growth of plant metabolites? Yes, uh, there is a possibility the, because uh, uh, several studies, even in the Catarantus and uh, another I was reading that paper. 
so they they may induce because the microbes are associated with the plants so they may induce certain gene expression genes which are involved in the pathway of that particular metabolite so in the cacanthus case group or a group in the cacanthus because we know that cacanthus gene uh, mean blastin and mean pistin is important in the cancer drug so in that study the group uh, in cmas for dr alok kala they have shown that in this endophytic microbes they they were able to induce the expression they were expressions of the pathway uh, that uh, window link pathway that pathway actually important for the expressions of those uh, those drugs so in that way the exact mechanism you cannot say but uh, the study was uh, explained that the They they may induce the pathway of the uh, that particular drug which they place into the plant. So this is the way they can do that. Uh, sir, so can we uh, increase the concentration of any plant metabolites by this process that endophytosis? Yes, yes. Uh, it has been proved in the case of cacanthus, in the case of uh, uh, Vitania somnifera, in the case of other. so by uh, by this microbes because that uh, uh, the seeds which are available in the market they they may not contain the actual microbes so if you if you find the good microbes which are influencing the growth and development of plant so in that microbes you can use to treat that plant and uh, and you can measure the content it, it is improving the content so you can use that microbes as a inoculant by stimulant Uh, to give better and uh, it, it will also replace the your fertilizer use of fertilizer and the chemicals in the field so it, it is the way you can go for organic cultivation of and the production of the drugs improve content of the drugs production in that particular crop okay sir okay thank you uh any other questions participants if you have any doubts you can ask Hello. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, uh, you explain everything very uh, beautifully. Uh, you explain everything about methodologies to study uh, seed endophytes, uh, bacteria, and their role. Uh, sir, I am wondering just to uh, are these endophytic bacteria are equivalent to human gut microbiota? yes we can say that because uh, uh, the gut microbiota you know because uh, you are from biology so their role in different aspect uh, the, uh, the human health and uh, disease susceptibility so likewise the, you can say the root because of where that plant is trapped the microbes uh, the nutrients so that root and the root internal uh, internal environment of the root is a gut of that uh, Uh, the like a gut of the human, so uh, this is the we believe that we believe that, and we several times we discuss it also that the microbes which are associated with the plant will be like a gut microbiota of the human. Of any kind of because you know that the uh, the microbiome concept is that we are not an individual species; we are consist of millions of species together. So we are not an individual species. So this is true for any kind of organism, not only for the plant. It is true for any kind of reality, and this is the way the evolution occurs because the microbes have. It is a very uh, uh, evident. Uh, you can think that the, because the microbes have evolved uh, the first time, so they have taken everything in the direction of the evolution of the of the higher organism. You know? The mitochondria and the chloroplast. These are the old, uh, these are the microbial in origin. So. Uh, it is very true to say that the microbes uh, you cannot separate any individual species from the microbes they are actually running our uh, biological systems any species any individuals so, okay. yes thank you sir yes uh sir i have another question if you allow me yeah yeah uh, actually in chatisgarh in bastar region there is a one local plant uh, name is carota uranus Uh, it produces a one a liquid juice uh, name is sulfi so the tribal people eat for nutritional value but this juice after 3 or 4 hours get fermented and useless so how how we can reduce the fermentation it is due to maybe microbial contamination so the fermentation maybe the yeast is there right? so maybe okay. uh, because you know the one uh, the fermentation process is very important 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Four percent alcohol, and that alcohol, and that is wonderful juice. Uh, we have a lot of objections on that, but uh, that is a wonderful nutrient uh, juice. You can say. So, if you consume as a fresh, it, is, it gives you a lot of nutrients. But if you keep it for overnight, the alcohol content may increase because of the fermentation. So, yes, sir. In the plant, I don't know. Uh, you uh, you can note down an email and you can send me that information of that plant. So. I would like to see that juice uh, what's uh, because uh, I have heard first time from you that the plant uh, extracts the tragopicular region. So that is uh, your answer of your question is that is only because of the fermentation. Maybe bacteria fermentation also. So bacteria and fungi go east uh, uh, may, may be there. So because uh, the fermentation process is very quick. So they may increase the content of alcohol, they may increase the content of other metabolites, we never know that. So maybe it is not good for the health also. So, yes. so uh, that is a matter of study. You can you can uh, you can uh, means uh, gather the information from those people, so uh, and you can test it also with the help of those people who are working in uh, microbial metabolites or uh, microbial fermentation. Yeah, you can send me also the information. My email uh, with uh, Matt, so you can send me information also. I would like to see that. It's good, good information. Good information. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other question, participants? Okay. Uh, now uh, I, I invite Kavita, madam, for word of thanks. Yes. Uh, thank you, Dhansar, sir. Now it's my pleasing duty to propose formal vote of thanks of today's session. Uh, so on behalf of Department of Geology, Chemistry, Botany and my own behalf, I express my sincere thanks to Dr. Shatish Kumar Varma for accepting our invitation and de delivering such a valuable lecture. Uh, uh, thank you very much, sir. I am grateful to Principal Government Lahiri PG College for the constant support and motivation to organize such kind of program. I am thankful to Dr. Dhanshay Demangan, co-convener, and Mr. Virendra Kumar, organizing secretary for, uh, for uh, their efforts to make this workshop successful. I am heartily th thankful to organizing team. Uh, and last but not the least, I express my uh, heartfelt gratitude to all the participants. Uh, for showing their interest and for their active participation throughout this workshop. Uh, thank you all once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank so, you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Huh? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Okay. So, may I uh, remove myself from here? Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. okay.